friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It's finally warm enough in the morning, and it's still in the 60s, but at least warm enough to wear a t-shirt rather than those dang flannel shirts, which I like flannel shirts, don't get me wrong, but I'm ready for short sleeves. So that's where we're at today. Catching up on what happened yesterday. Many of you have seen that I released part two of the Kim Warner uh, series on him being kind of a wannabe apprentice and taking some lessons there in the shop for a couple of three days. Well, I accidentally released part three yesterday for a short time and then I realized that it was part three rather than part two. Not that you probably care, but here's what happened on that. I reviewed part two at lunchtime yesterday, and so part two was fine with me. So then I, after I reviewed it, I went out and played with my grandsons and went fishing with them and all those kinds of things. And incidentally, I've got a few fishing clips uh, that I'll probably put in the shop talk on Friday because some people have asked to see a little bit more about the fishing there on the pond, and you may be surprised. <laughs> After that fishing thing, well, then I ran back in the house and thought, well, I'll go ahead and release that part two. Well, unbeknownst to me, she had already put part three out there. Well, they're kind of, you know, the most recent one is at the top. Well, I just assumed the part two was still the most recent one. I didn't even bother really reading it that close or anything. And there you go with me and the reading thing too. I, yeah, me and reading just don't get along real well. So anyway, I went ahead and released it. And then a few minutes after that, I noticed she had sent me a text and said she had already put part three out there. Be sure not to release the wrong one. Well, wouldn't you know? Yeah. Well, anyway, so all I did was take part three and make it private. And, uh, you know, part two is out there. So part three will be released before long. But I reviewed part three and it's missing a piece. So there's no mission in part three that I want to have revised anyway. So if you are one of the 200 people or so that have already watched part three, you might want to watch it again because there'll be a slight revision to it. I'm not sure that we have the footage to for the omission, but I know there's an omission. So I'm, you know, I assume the footage is there and we'll have to find it. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's just more complicated than meets the eye. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. On the other hand, the batteries did come in. And I was a little disappointed. I thought they're awful small again, but they are quite a bit bigger than the ones I already had. You know, if you look at these, I'm gonna say these are maybe 10 mil or so, and these are 12 mil or so. So these are considerably bigger, and I think they're a little bit more powerful too. So I got 100 of them there. That ought to be enough. That means we're gonna be back on the base race here, uh, and we're gonna be cleating up these long cracks on the inside. I will tell you something that you may not realize when you start doing these cleats and clamping with magnets, and especially powerful magnets like this. You can't get them very close together. <laughs> like if you want your cleats an inch apart, that's not gonna work with these. They're gonna jump over to the other magnet, you know? Um, yeah, you, you gotta keep them further apart than that. So what I'm planning to do is make myself a spacer that keeps them a, maybe three inches apart. I'm just talking out loud here. And then I'll, uh, you know, set all the, the the um, cleats in there at three inches apart, let's just say. And then I'll come back after those are dry and I'll put cleats in between those again, and which will still be at three inches. They'll stay, still be apart, you know. But that way they'll be about every inch and a half or so there'll be a cleat. That should be sufficient. But like I said, you can't, you just can't put them very close together. If you put them very close together, I guarantee all they do is just jump across and grab onto the other one and it's real, it's kind of like a nightmare, it really is. It, you know, nothing is simple. Everything looks so simple on video and it's just not as simple as you might think it is. <laughs> well, my friends, I just looked off camera here and tried to find that missing footage that I told you I wanted to see in part three of the Kim Warner series, and I found it. So, yeah, we are gonna revise part three, so if you're one of those 200 people that got to see part three already, you may wanna watch it at least toward the end again. Now, before I get into this base thing and all these magnets, <laughs> 
I want to do an experiment. So let's turn the camera down here and I'll show you the experiment. This isn't all that terribly scientific, but I just kind of want to see if I can figure out how close I can put these together before they start sliding together. There's two here, two here, and two here. So I'm going to start sliding them. I'm going to, I'm going to put a mark right here and I'm going to try to visually see where when I start sliding this to, to see when it actually jumps. That'll give me some idea how close I can get them before they grab a hold of each other. Now that's closer than I expected. I don't know. There it is. Uh, so that wasn't too bad, actually. That was a little less violent than I was expecting. Of course, they're on edge. But that was approximately there. I'll try it again. So approximately right about in here, roughly. So I don't know what that distance is, but um, it's about an inch and a half. So, I don't know, I could possibly get by with putting them that close together, but I don't think I'm going to. I think that's just going to be a hassle, so I'll, uh, I think I will stick to my original plan and do them every three inches, and then I'll come back and put them in between. So what I did was, I measured three inches on this board, then I took the uh, little uh, magnet and set it there and marked off the diameter of that shorter so that I think that should make it exactly three inches on center. Yep, that's what it does. It makes them three inches on center. So that's where we're going to do that. It's kind of scary because some things, they jump together really hard. <laughs> When they, when they hit face to face, they hit hard. On that sliding sideways thing, it wasn't that big a deal. But anyway, I'm going to use that as my spacer. They'll be on three inch centers, and then when we split the difference, they should be one and a half inch centers. I've made a bunch of uh, cleats again. I've beveled uh, the two long edges. Haven't yet, but I will sand the ends off uh, just a little bit, just to knock off the rough, sharp corner. So I've got a bunch of these to put in. I'm not, you're not going to be able to see me do this, so I'll show you what it looks like after I'm finished. I'll be gluing them in with tight bond and using the magnets to hold them together. This is proving to be very difficult, and the reason is because it's so far down in there. So what I do is I set the, I just reach in, put the cleat as close as to where I can get it. I've got my spacer in there, by the way, the one that spaces them out at three inch centers. And then once I get this manipulated with this long stick, then I use the stick and press the cleat down tight to the top, or to the side, I should say. And then I find a magnet. Getting these little suckers off of here is not exactly the easiest thing you've ever done in your life either. So I take one off there, take one off. They're easier to get one off at a time, I can tell you that, than it is to take two or three at a time. I mean, you can take two or three off easier, but then separating them afterwards is a pain. That's what I mean. And now I'm right on the spot where it's hitting the, hitting the table, so I'm going to have a tough time getting this magnet in there. There it is, I think. Okay. I got it. It's... Uh, yeah, it's complicated. These cleats are a little bigger too, by the way. I've made these like at 75 thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, the reason being, I, you know, I want, there's only going to be this extra support, so I want them to be strong. Even 75 thousandths is not real thick. And I put my little spacer in there again, just to kind of try to keep it fairly uniform this way and that also helps me find where to put this cleat when I go in there with my hand because I can't see so I can feel that spacer and then I can put this at the end of that spacer and I'm pretty close that way and then manipulate it again 
like so. Get it just about where I want it and press it down with the stick as good as I can get it pressed down. Then I can put the magnet on it and again laying one magnet down there on the table and then put this one on top of there and and I just have to kind of hold it in place until I can get this other magnet in place and all that does is just put a little bit of extra tension on it on the cleat to try to make sure it's in good contact Quite honestly, even these magnets are not that terribly strong. I, I wish they were actually stronger so that they would put more pressure on the cleat, but uh, it works. And I guess we'll just continue that until I get all of this done, and then I'll try to show you a view on the inside. Well, I thought I'd show you the first batch of cleats, and uh, they go from here to here. and. Here, there's a big bunch of plywood. Um, I'll probably get one more cleat in here, but there's plywood behind a lot of this crack, so I probably won't do anything there. Anyway, uh, we're going to hopefully get one more cleat in between all these later. That should make it really solid. Oh my goodness, that's been fun. And I've got quite a bit more to do, so I'll get to it. We're having quite a rain out there today, by the way. Uh, it was much harder a little earlier, but it's still pouring down pretty good. But there's the other uh, couple of cleats I put in on the side where all the tear out was. I think I'm gonna have to stop right there for today and uh, we'll get back to it uh, at a later time, or at least you won't see it today. Maybe you'll see the results of it maybe tomorrow. I thank you for tuning in with me, and uh, we'll hope that you uh, are enjoying these daily vlogs and seeing how I uh, sneak up on fixing these kinds of things, because it's just a slow, steady process. You don't try to do it all at once. Uh, otherwise, it's like building on a house of cards. It's going to fall down. You kind of got to let one thing get solid, then you move on to the next thing. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.